When you talk about faith, many think about pastors' candles and flamboyant ministers. Yet we know from scripture that faith is not just a category, but a framework of thinking, a worldview. This podcast seeks to create biblically faithful and culturally engaging conversations where life and faith meet. Worldview Wednesday is a production of Veracity Found. For more information, visit our website, www.veracityfound.org. Friends, you are very welcome once again to Worldview Wednesday. Thank you for joining us. My name is Geoffrey Bazira. I'll be your host. And uh, once more in the studio, I'm with uh, Dennis. Dennis Mugume, yes, it is. Yes, Dennis Mugume and Joseph Piamukama. Joseph and Dennis, thank you very much for joining us once again. Last week, last time, sorry, <laughs> the last time we met, we we introduced the research report mm-hmm. on Fanero mm-hmm. that was commissioned by ACFA, Africa mm-hmm. Center for Apologetics Research, mm-hmm. and done by Veracity Found. Yeah, and available for don- download. Yes, well. yes, mm-hmm. it is available on our website, yeah. uh, www.veracityfound.org. Yeah. Yeah. So today we are going to explore Fanero's teaching on who yeah. Christ is. Yeah. And that's where we will begin. Maybe right from there, we'll, we'll begin by asking ourselves why start from Fanero's teaching on Christ. Is there any significance to it? Yeah. Joseph. Yeah. Uh, Colossians 1 17. In him all things are hold together. In him that is in Christ, all things hold together. If we have a distorted or wrong understanding, Mm. of who Christ is. Yeah. We will have a wrong understanding of who God is. Yeah. We will have a wrong understanding of who man is, of what humanity is. We will have a wrong understanding of what salvation is as well. Mm. Uh, we also have a wrong understanding of what it means, why there is suffering in the world. Yeah. And many of those. So you could say that Christ or what some might call Christology, is the anchor that actually holds everything the believer is and believes and, and holds dear mm-hmm. together. Mm-hmm. And so a distorted view of who Christ is inevitably leads to a distorted view of God's salvation, humanity, yeah. and, and many of those important aspects of salvation. Yes. Yeah, just to add that even if Christ is the only way to the Father, we cannot come to the Father except through him. Meaning, to distort who Christ is, there is no way to the Father. Yeah. yeah. That we cannot guarantee salvation. Yeah. One cannot be assured of salvation from a false Christ. Yeah. yeah. You see. So, And then secondly, also, we do not know Christ as we want him to be. We know him as he has revealed himself to be yeah. in the scriptures. Mm. So to have a false version of who Christ is, mm-hmm. is not to have Christ. Yeah, yeah. yeah. it's yeah. to worship an idol. An, yeah. an idol of yeah. our own making and yeah. imagination. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, you're right. Going back again to the last episode, you mentioned, you know, using our Christian church history lenses. Mm-hmm. Sorry. Mm-hmm. And uh, you talked about Gnosticism, Mm -hmm. a very interesting movement. Do they have a particular view, a particular way they looked at Christ Mm -hmm. that Mm -hmm. the traditional church disagreed with? And Mm -hmm. if if they did, um, could you, you know, paint that picture for us? Yeah. For those who might not be familiar with church history, there were some councils, some meetings of Christian leaders and bishops that took place in the early centuries, like, I mean, 325, the Council of Nicaea, uh, 451, the Council of of Chalcedon, uh, 381, the Council of Constantinople. And most of the conversations that were being carried out or most of the questions that were uh, that occasioned these meetings were actually you would say gnostic influences in mm-hmm. a way mm-hmm. uh, one of them of course being arianism by uh, the gentleman the, the presbyter or leader called uh, arias in north africa by the way that's another thing i need to throw in there <laughs> it was within africa that, that, that these conversations began <laughs> yes. yes his view of you know uh, jesus not necessarily being uh, as god uh, or to the place of God the Father and the idea that God the Word has a beginning mm. um, and and the famous statement there was when he was not mm. um, and the early church would reject that. But one other especially crucial for our discussion a person who 
you could say propagated a gnostic sort of idea of who Christ is is Nestorius. Now for Nestorius who was a bishop of the of Constantinople the present day Istanbul very early on in the in the 5th century uh, did not see Christ and Jesus as one person necessarily. Mm. Um he saw you know Christ as different from the word and this is what he says in one of one of his letters uh, he says a creature did not produce the creator rather she gave birth to the human being the instrument of the godhead the holy spirit did not create god the logos rather he formed out of the virgin a temple for god the logos a temple in which he dwelt moreover the incarnate god did not die he raised up the one in whom he was incarnate he stooped down to raise up what had collapsed but he did not fall and what nestorius is doing there is see a distinction in person between uh the human person whom he, you know he might call jesus yes, yes. uh and the divine one whom mm. he calls the word or the logos now gnostics of course um had earlier you know spoken in similar terms we read in uh, one great church father or apostolic father uh, called Irenaeus of Lyons and he says the gnostics in quotes maintain that the baptism of the visible Jesus was unto remission of sins but the redemption of Christ you see <laughs> there is the visible Jesus but there is the redemption of Christ mm. who descended upon Jesus was unto perfection since they supposed that the former was ensouled but the latter spiritual in other words for the gnostics Christ was spiritual Jesus was mm. physical okay and so there is a separation between Jesus Christ Jesus Christ is not one person Mm. you know uh, perfectly divine perfectly human or truly divine truly human mm. for the gnostics jesus is this human person who you know uh, has a human ancestry has human emotions has human feelings and all that yeah. but christ is the spiritual being the divine spark if, if you could put it that way yeah. the one who descends from above and begins to you would say indwell or be united to jesus and he continues and says irenaeus of the gnostics that many of Jesus' disciples, the Gnostics are sad, did not realize that Christ had descended on him. Still, when Christ had ad- had descended on Jesus, Jesus began to work wonders to heal, to announce the unknown father and publicly acknowledge that he himself is the son of the first man, right? <laughs> so so that the, the need to see that for the Gnostics Christ and Jesus even when they say Jesus Christ they actually have different meanings and maybe that's the other warning that we need to have that most of these errors most of these wrong teachings are not done using strange new words mm. actually we could be having a conversation using the same words right. but we actually mean different things right yeah. and so the gnostics would speak of Christ they would speak of Jesus but by Christ and by Jesus they had completely different uh, reference or meanings from what the Christian church uh, heard. Mm. Right. And um, yeah, j- j- just to add again, if you do that, if you teach that, then you are departing from what scripture presents Christ as. Yeah. I mean, the whole account of you know John chapter 1 verse 1, we have Hebrews uh, the, the in the entire book of Hebrews you yeah. know because the writer of Hebrews is writing really to people who are Jews mm. and they've been monotheists for a long time mm. and would have found, found the idea of a, a man who presents himself as God very very obnoxious mm. but the account he makes there in Hebrews is, is to show that the person that they have rejected about making the claims of God is not only God, but he is the, both the priest, the sacrifice, and the fulfillment of everything they've been waiting for in the Old Testament. Mm-hmm. So when mm-hmm. the Gnostics begin to separate those two, you already see where they're going in as far as something is, 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 is yeah. now concerned. Yeah. And the question there is, are we accusing Fanero of something that they're not teaching? Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, yeah. yeah. And there was the, the bit about um, Christ yes. being one of the, the other divine stars among yeah. the very many yeah. divine stars, yeah. right? Yeah. 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 yeah, there is that too. But just on the separation of Christ and, and from Jesus, and Jesus. Um, this is what Paneru says as well. And this is in there, in, in, in Luvega's teaching, Treasure in Athen Vessels. Mm. He says, Christ went also went through some things. 
and at some point he found himself praying to go against the will of the father but that was not Christ praying oh my that was Jesus mm. you see that who understands what i'm saying uh, vega uh, says jesus prayed that way not the christ the christ knew what was happening hallelujah mm. but jesus wanted to live jesus wanted to be like any other man grow up have children and have a good life but the christ could not allow the jesus mm. who understands what i just <laughs> said <laughs> yeah see <laughs> so in in Lubega's conception and actually in the conception of his followers too you can have this conversation with them jesus and christ are not necessarily one person mm -hmm. jesus is the athri as 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 Lubega says he wanted to have a good life he wanted to live he wanted to be like any man grow up have children have a good life you see but the christ who now represents the spiritual the heavenly person mm. uh, could not allow this athri jesus to have his athri way yeah. uh, as such and you could say maybe that's one quote but in Christ the ultimate reality minute 37 uh, second 18 uh, he says in, you know in commenting on colossians 3:4 we appear with Christ and Christ is is emphasized we appear with Christ with the manifestation and i love that paul did not use the word jesus but he used Christ which is the anointed one the spiritual form of this word And again, Faneru uh, devotion of the revelations of Christ. He says, this is Rebecca. He says, all the disciples of Jesus Christ knew, I mean, yeah, all the, all the disciples of Jesus Christ knew Jesus, but they never knew the Christ. You see that? Yeah. All the disciples of Jesus Christ knew Jesus, but they never knew the Christ. The Christ can appear to you and you will not know him. Contrast that quote with what we just read above from the Gnostics in the second century. He's where they said many of Jesus' disciples, the Gnostics are sad, did not realize mm. that Christ had descended on him. Mm. Still, when Christ had descended on, on Jesus, just began to do wonders and all that. So the Gnostics believed the disciples did not realize the Christ. Mm. They, they knew the Jesus, but they didn't realize the Christ. Mm. That's Gnostics. Faneru or Vega as well repeats that and says all the disciples of Jesus knew Jesus, but they never knew Christ. And so it goes back to the question of does, do they know that they are actually teaching Gnosticism? And sometimes when you find these striking similarities, you mm. begin to wonder whether actually... <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I mean, yeah. one one might argue that maybe you're reading too much into giving them a lot of credit. <laughs> Let me right. use that phrase. Yeah. Could it be that it's just a faulty understanding of the two natures of Christ? Because many of us yeah. do have, who will probably have a faulty understanding of the relationship of the two natures of of Christ. Yeah. Yeah, the divine and the human nature, without consciously making them two yeah. people, two persons. I, I would imagine that there is um, there is a place for error where yeah. we are not teaching. Mm -hmm. But James is very clear on some things. He says, "Brethren, not many of you should desire to be teachers, for <laughs> yeah. teachers will be judged yeah. with a stricter judgment." Mm -hmm. So, yes, indeed, they could be. They they could maybe they could not be aware, but they. It's very striking. Yeah. The semblances between what the Gnostics taught about who Jesus was mm -hmm. and what Faneri is teaching. You see, to separate the Jesus from the Christ, it, it means again, you, you have no Jesus of the Bible. Yeah. You, you have a, a man-made Jesus. Yeah, and you don't yes. have a savior either. Yeah. Um, because ultimately then the one who died for our sins is not God the Son. Mm -hmm. It's actually the human person. Yeah. So in that sense, our savior is a man, not God. Mm -hmm. uh, and that will be maybe teasing out those yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, specifics uh, and, and ramifications uh, later. Yeah, yeah, we'll talk about the implication. But um, going back to Jesus, Christ, the idea of the spark, mm -hmm. you know, is that also you know very important for us to highlight. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, so, just a quick footnote on on the previous. Uh, just the Bible, uh, the aspect where the Bible stresses the fact that the Christ is that Jesus is the Christ. Maybe just to put mm, that there. Mm. Uh, that three times uh, the Bible insists insists that Christ was Jesus in Acts eighteen five mm -hmm. and Acts eighteen twenty eight mm -hmm. and John twenty thirty one. The Christ was Jesus, and what that means is that there is no Christ who is not Jesus. There is no Jesus who is not Christ. Mm. They are the two titles or the two names, if you might put it that way, refer to one person. They mm. have one referent, who is God the Son. Mm. So there is nothing like this is the earthly element and this is the spiritual element. To do that is to actually be Gnostic and 
to go against what scripture teaches. Um, yeah. But yeah, the aspect of the divine spark, spark which really ties into the whole of Christ is the spiritual uh, idea. So the Gnostics indeed would say, and this is again uh, the venerable Bishop Irenaeus uh, of Lyons, he says that they say that in this manner, the eons or the divine sparks were made equal in form and mind since all have become minds and all words and all men and all Christs, right? And he says again that where far some of them, that's the Gnostics, advanced to such a pitch of pride that they claimed to be like Jesus. Others even claimed that they were more powerful than Jesus. Some again assert that they were superior to his apostles, for instance, Peter, Paul, and the rest of the apostles. They claim that they are in no way inferior to Jesus. Really, their souls, they claim, descend from the same sphere mm-hmm. mm. because in like manner they hold in the in contempt the makers of the world. They have been deemed worthy of the same power and return again to the same place. So I had mentioned about how the whole Gnostic conception of reality is that at the beginning there is the one, mm. uh, the ultimate one, the the divine one or what you might say god but then from him began emanating ray, sort of like sun rays mm-hmm. so sparks like you know be, begin emanating from or mm. coming from that one mm. and the further they moved away from the center the more they were ignorant not only of the one but of themselves as well of their own nature mm-hmm. as that for the, as a result then they were entrapped in uh ignorance and material reality mm-hmm. And what Christ does come to do in the Gnostic conception is not so much as to save, and, and, and Dennis had mentioned it, not so much as to save us from sin, mm-hmm. as much as to remind us of who we who are. Yeah. Mm. Because he comes from the place where we also once Ooh. came, yes. right? Mm. And so we are as divine sparks, sparks, divine stars or eons as Christ himself is. Right. <laughs> Right. And we will be returning to the same place. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. And um, and Apostle Grace goes ahead to mention that in mm. his uh, sermon, the man from above, mm. he says the superstar Jesus will stand from above, and the moment he reached heaven, he said, Apostle Grace, go down and show them. And he says, I came, I came the day I got born again. Mm. The moment I, uh, the, the the moment I entered the tabernacle, the angels told me, Welcome to to, to the world of men. Wow. I am not ordinary. <laughs> I'm from above. And and that's in the teaching. Yeah. You see. Yeah. Then um, you know, so 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 the, so the whole idea of 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 us being like Jesus, mm. which not like. I mean, again, the issue here is that they use the same language as the Bible uses, but meaning utterly different things. Yeah. You see. So now, like here, you, you can tell that it's not what the Bible teaches. We, mm. we are not somewhere in heaven mm. waiting to get born again and our real selves will come and join this earthly body. Yeah. You know, and that has consequences, by the way. Yeah. It yeah. has lots of them, as we shall see. Yeah. We, we, we will get into that. Um, and because it fits into, you know, us being Christ, mm-hmm. yeah, um, and, and something of the sort. <laughs> yeah, and, and and in one of the the other quotes as well, we talked about being divine stars. Uh, mm-hmm. is, is explicit, and this is in um, uh, in let me see, let me see the course of your star, mm-hmm. I think, where he mentions that we too, mm-hmm. as children of God, and when he says we too, he refers the the, the two refers to Christ, of course, uh, as children of God, as stars. Mm. And quotes Deuteronomy one ten, and come in the likeness of that one star, mm. Jesus. Mm. You see, and many more. We were walking at a certain place, he says, where we once were not because of the last of this world, but then because of the sacrifice of Jesus Christ, we were separated. And now John writes and says that you are of God. Ephesus is, and not you are for God. So the of God there is, and he will say this in many other places, the idea that we have God's DNA, right? Mm -hmm. (laughs) We are of the same nature, the same substance as God. Mm. Now that's the Gnostic idea, the idea that we are sparks or stars that emanate or come from the one. Mm. The same nature, no difference. The only problem is we moved further away from that one and became entrapped 
in ignorance. Yeah. That's the same idea that Faneru propagates, yeah. uh, which is a great distortion, definitely, of who God is, yeah. but a great distortion of who Christ is as well. Yeah. Just to mention that one line, we are stars and mm. we come in that 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 line is actually the the, the opening jingle for the for, for the for the sermon. So yeah. just in case you think it was just an, an idea that was offshoot and no 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 it was it's the opening jingle for the DVDs. Mm. So just to put it out, 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 out. <laughs> <laughs> It feeds into the desire for us to exalt ourselves first yeah, of all. Right. Yeah. But as we do that, what we are doing is bringing God to our level. Yes. Right? Yes. Uh, yes we'll yes. talk about the ramifications of that. But yeah. is there anything more that you would want to say that the Gnostics believed that ties into a lot into what... Uh, for neuro teachers, yeah, um, yeah, there would be maybe quickly to assert that we and Christ are not the same. Mm. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, I think it needs to be put out there. What the biblical authors do present is the uniqueness, the exclusivity, the otherness of Jesus Christ. Mm. He is not one of the many stars. Mm. If you want to call him a star, it's up to you. He is the only star. Right. If you want to call him a star. And especially the New Testament uses, you know, that word usually translated as begotten or only son, if you've seen John 3.16. But that word monogenes, it uses it of someone of a unique nature, the only one in their genre mm. or the only one in their class. That's mono, genes, mm. uh, uh, sort of like where you get your genre. Monogenes. Mm. Um, and five times in John chapter 1 verse 14, chapter 1 verse 18, chapter 3 verse 16, chapter 3 verse 18, first John 4 9, John insists that there is no one in Christ's class. Yeah. He alone is God the Son mm-hmm. made human. We are not. And so when you begin to confuse who Christ is and who you are, you run into trouble. And, that's, and this is why these conversations are very crucial because there are many who actually hold on to this and they are convinced they are holding on to Christianity yeah. when what they are doing is holding on to heresy, damnable heretic teaching. Yeah, yeah. J- just to add the fact that um, w- when we seek to make ourselves Christ, and to make ourselves good, mm. we even lose what it means to be human. Yeah, by wanting to exalt ourselves as stars, and and this is why it's it is appealing mm. to young people. Mm. I'm I'm a youth pastor, so I I know what the passions of youth come with. Yeah. the need for us to get something more than what the current church is offering. So when someone hears this, mm. it if you look at the videos and the and the DVDs, there's an an, an excitement. So mm. as he's saying, you know, I'm, I'm the man from above, instead of maybe discernment and shock going through the audience, what mm. do we see? We see tongues. Mm. We see people rattling in tongues and carrying chairs and celebrating the depth of, of, the revelation. of revelation. That's mm. why, again, we go back to our last week's episode about uh, the need for us to examine things with the church history lens. Yeah, yeah. This is not deep revelation. This yeah. is error yeah. and it has to be called out. Yeah. 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 And, so, and yeah. Sorry. <laughs> no, uh, <laughs> the, the other area, of course, that, that, that in a sense ties into what we've already discussed um, is so for the Gnostics, Christ, since of course we have the same nature, the Gnostics teach yeah. as, as Christ. Christ is then not so much of um, our savior as mm-hmm. he is our mm-hmm. example. And so Christ comes to show us our power, mm-hmm. what we are able to do. To do. Once uh, we know, once we find out that yes, revelation. Yes, yeah. once we find out that sort of, of revelation, mm-hmm. uh, we can't do what he did. Wow. Yeah. Uh, right? And the same idea would indeed be quite, quite apparent with within Faneru, with the many of, of their uh, teachings. For example, they will say that he, that is Christ, did not walk on water for them, that's the disciples, to know that he was a man of God. Mm-hmm. He walked on water because he wanted to teach what it means for a man to walk by faith and defy the laws of earth. Mm. And so, of course, biblically speaking, in Mark, especially when Jesus walks on water, what he's saying to them, especially if you're aware of the Old Testament, 
you would quickly be reminded of uh, Isaiah 43, especially verse 16, where Yahweh makes a way in the waters, mm. which is an echo of the Exodus story, mm. where actually God ma- paves way for his chosen to walk on dry ground through the Red Sea. Mm. And so when Christ comes in the New Testament and walks on water for the apostles, that's a demonstration that Christ is Yahweh, the God mm. of Israel. Mm. Right? But for their, for, for, for Grace and, and for Neru, no, what Christ is doing is give you a demo, mm. a sample of what you can do mm. since you are of the same nature. Yeah. Right? <laughs> and, yeah. and, and he, he does the same with uh, the other someone when he you know, um, the Lord is good, as he says, um, speaking of Christ cursing the fig tree and it dries. And he says, it is not in the consciousness of the Son of God to walk to the fig tree and it doesn't have fruit in the time, in the name of it's not its season. The tree thought it would relate with Jesus as a son of man, but he wasn't. That's why he answered it. That means, you see that, uh, you see how, how he interprets it. That means that spiritually the tree refused to respond to a regenerate man so that's why you come in. Mm. <laughs> a regenerate man you, you to the was, divine order. Yeah. Yes, yeah. yes. Even in this foreign world, these living things are still conscious of the sons of God. The tree wanted to submit to the son of God, submit the son of God to the patterns of the men of the flesh. Mm. So of course, for Mark writing the cursing of the fig tree, those who study again the Old Testament know that the fig tree traditionally represents Israel. Mm. Right? And there is a reason why Mark places that fig tree narrative within the sections of Jesus' temple visits mm-hmm. and the conversations he has there. Right? Of course, we do explain this more in, in the report. And what Mark is saying, what Christ is saying with the cursing of the fig tree is that Israel, which has a semblance of of fruitfulness, a semblance of life with its temple activities, with the sacrifices, with the priestly order and all that is devoid of the fruit of righteousness. Mm -hmm. Now what is going to happen with it very soon is that it will dry from its root. It will be uprooted precisely because Christ is going to die and establish a new order. Right. That's what right. that's what Mark, that's what the apostles are saying. But for Grace and for Faneru, no, 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 no. Jesus is showing you a demo of what of, you can, what do, you can do and 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 the fact that nature should be obeying you. Yeah. yeah. And so yeah. those distortions may go unnoticed, but they distort the biblical story, they distort the gospel, they distort the nature of who Christ is, especially in comparison to who we are. Right. And they and they make God our servant. Yeah. They yeah. make God our yeah. servant. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and 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 I think we, we, we actually want that in yeah. in terms of the, the fallenness of who we are as a humanity. We live in a world that has you know, we've watched so many movies, X Men, yeah. all all these supernatural superpower movies. Yeah. And so when we come to Christ and he's offering us exactly what X Men is giving us mm-hmm. uh, a, a chance for us to control nature and, and to speak to trees and they dry out. Yeah. It's appealing. Yeah. And, and again, that's different from mainstream Christianity. That's why Fanero is a thing. That's why it's being under study here. Yeah. In other words, it is not giving us what a normal, you know, what Joseph yeah. has said about Israel uh, being, you know, phased out and Christ establishing a new way to God. No. Um, this is the immediacy of power. Mm. And the African ideal is power. We need to show people that look here, we are not yeah. ordinary. We are from yeah. ab- above. Yeah. And and that's how Fafanero comes in. This conversation <laughs> can go on and on. Right. Yeah. Uh, I mean, there is there, there is the teaching of Christ no longer being um, human. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And a lot of this will feed into probably how we understand uh, how they would understand, you know, salvation yeah. and what it is. Yeah. Very shortly, I don't know whether you can mention something about that, and then yeah. we'll, we'll. There is also on. the aspect of Christ equals me, because uh, <laughs> of course we had we had read uh, Irenaeus who was saying the Gnostics claimed that they are all eons, they are all Christs, mm. Mm. not belonging to Christ, but Christs, mm. and this is what Faneru says as well. Uh, God entered Christ. It's a problematic statement, right. but let's go on. Um, God entered Christ. Mm. And all the attributes of Christ, he gave them to you. And what are those attributes? Power, money. Mm. And then they say, Christ equals me. Mm. As in, this is not something I've made up. It's something that they said, Mm. right? And he says, there is a place where a man needs not redemption. If that man is perfect in love, he becomes as 
I am. Mm. And he says, the Christ does not need redemption. Mm. So you see the correlation between that man who is perfect in love is the Christ. And so the idea that you do not just belong to Christ, but you are the Christ mm. <laughs> is, is a Gnostic idea. It's a funny idea, but a great distortion. But also the aspect of God entered Christ and all the attributes. There is a much of God entering, God entering. And I think somewhere else um, I may need to find where. Yeah, they say, really, God entered you and everything and destroyed everything that made you human. Yeah. God came in the inside yeah. of you and everything that made you human, a human being was quenched, eaten up. Only him remained in the inside of you. Yeah. Because again, for the Gnostics, remember, material reality is evil. Yeah. It's baser. It's it's uh, of less value. Mm. It's the spirit mm. that is more important. And so the idea there far that you could say you're human when you are a, you, you are a believer is an anathema. Mm. I mean, Grace Rivega speaks of uh, one instance when we was watching a TV and the preacher said we are humans. And he's like, I switched off and I was angry. Mm. We are not human, right? Mm. Yeah. Uh, so because for them, their conception of being human, again, is the Gnostic idea th- that we became human as we fell away from the perfect one. Yeah. And therefore, this humanity is itself a consequence of sin and evil. Mm. And to be saved or to be redeemed in that regard is to be taken back to the realm where you are, where you are a divine spark. Yeah. And of course, if that has to be the case, Christ himself has to lead the way. Yeah. Right? And yeah. so he says um, in the revelation of Christ, he says, Christ in the flesh is no more. Now we regard the spirit of Christ and his spirit can only be known through revelation because revelation is the eyes of the spirit. And so in his understanding, Christ is no longer human. Yeah. He is not man. Yeah. <laughs> Which, of course, is completely contrary to what Scripture teaches. Uh, yeah. In Second Corinthians, even Second Corinthians five fifteen itself is not necessarily saying Christ is no longer human. He's saying we do not know Christ from a carnal standpoint. Yeah, yeah. But Second First Timothy two five, we have one mediator, right, uh, between man and God. Yeah. And the man, Jesus Christ. Mm. You see, the whole resurrection argument of Paul in First Corinthians 15 mm. says if he's not risen, we are still dead in our sins. And how, how is he risen? Not in his divine nature. His divine nature doesn't need rising. Yeah. He's risen in his human nature, which he goes on to show with many proofs. Uh, in Luke 24, uh, 36 to 37, when he appears and they think he's a ghost. And he says, see my hands, see my feet that I, I, I am myself touch me and see for a spirit does not have flesh and bones as you see that i have so christ goes a long way to show that um to show that he is human yeah resurrected but faneru goes a long way to argue contrary to christ yeah. that actually he's not human yeah and that we too are not and we've talked about this a bit but what are some of the implications that jump out uh, you know about all of this teaching on who christ is that faneru teaches uh, john was Dennis. very sp- uh, spot on mm. uh, second john one during mm. the episode uh, he says in verse 7, Many deceivers have gone out into the world, those who do not confess the coming of Jesus Christ in the flesh. Yeah. Such a one is the deceiver and the antichrist. Yeah. Watch yourselves that you don't lose what you have worked for, but we may win a full reward. All right. So John warns about those who would come denying mm. that Christ has come in the flesh. Mm. And unless we need more light or more it's it's very spot on. It's very clear that what Fanero teaches is actually anti-Christ doctrine. Yeah. yeah. And it's it's serious. I think any honest thinking person should examine that. Yeah. But again, the other consequence is, is salvation. If indeed John 3.16 is clear for God so loved that he gave his only begotten of the Father to, to you know, to that none should perish but, but all, should, all should come to life. If you have a destroyed Jesus, you have no gospel, you have no sal- salvation, yeah. You have another thing all together, yeah. completely all together. Yeah. 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 And so the Christ who is not human will not save Don't you. Save us. The Christ who is not God will not save you. The Christ <laughs> who is me. Yeah, the Christ who <laughs> is me <laughs> <laughs> yes. so will me. not save you. Yeah. Yeah. And so the need so one of the consequences of of all this indeed is that we cannot know God aright. And if we cannot know God aright, if in essence really who God is is who I am, then even if you have worship songs and all that, you are actually playing an act. In essence, you're worshiping yourself. Mm, right. Right? 
And so the glory and honor that is due to God alone because of his uniqueness. Because that's the thing that we worship God, we serve him, we follow him, we love him, not because he is like us, but precisely because he's unlike us. Mm. And so if our teaching and our beliefs is to conflate who Christ is, who God is with who we are, then we end up setting up an idol. Now we could say we are Christians. We could say we are genuine, all right, but actually what we believe, what we propagate, what we teach has nothing to do with Christianity. And so we must be careful with what we believe about who God is. We must be careful with what we believe about who Christ is. We must be careful about what we believe concerning what it means to be human because our worship, our salvation is dependent. If Christ is no longer human, then ultimately his coming was to destroy humanity. Mm. You no longer call Christ a savior. He is a destroyer. Yeah. Um, the whole idea that God came inside of you and everything that made you human was consumed does not make God good. It makes God a destroyer in that regard. And it also questions God's original intent of creating humans. Why does he create them in the first place if at the core to be human is evil and in need of being destroyed? Has God changed his mind? Right. And so there are many of those consequences that we may not get into uh, yeah. for the sake of time. Yeah, yeah. But they are serious questions that need to be asked. Question. A short story. Yeah, yes. um, a short story. <laughs> um, so someone who has a bad stomach ache or who gets malaria or who gets, uh, you know, it's the economy is the way it is at, at, at the moment, cannot say that mm. I am sick. Mm. Cannot say that I need some help mm. with transport going back home. Mm. No, they are gods. Yeah. We are Christ. We, we we do not do this. So that broken reality, uh, they they live in a an utopia. Mm. A virtual and a, reality. And, and a mother came to me at Saint Francis and said, "My daughter came back home the other day, and I told her that I've been water for the last two two weeks." She says, "What do you mean? There is water?" Mm. She says, "No, I have been in this house for the last two weeks, and there is no water." She says, "No, no, no, there is water." So that that sort of Disconnect. Disconnect. Between, between reality. Reality <laughs> and perception. <laughs> you know, so that, that's, that's other consi- Again, ideas have consequences. Yeah. Yeah. They do. Uh, thank you, gentlemen, Dennis, um, Joseph, uh, for these are conversations that are worthwhile having. In our next episode, we will explore Fanny's teaching on man mm-hmm. and salvation. But a lot of what we've talked about would feed into that. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it would. So thank you very much for sparing time to listen in. My name is Geoffrey, and I've been your host. Have a, a beautiful time. production of Veracity Found. For more information, visit our website, www.com.